Hello guys, Unifro here, back with another video, uh, and today it's doing something I haven't done before, and that is a tournament recap. Uh, the main reason I haven't done tournament recap is because I've hardly ever really played in any tournaments, uh, but this one was a big one. It was the uh, the second World Championship Qualifier, it was the first open one, um, so it had about 150, whereas the uh, the first Invitational Qualifier got about 25 people, or something like that, um, and I couldn't play in that one because I had a party on, so <laughs> you know how it goes. Um, so this was the open. Uh, anyone can enter. It was a basically Swiss at the start, and then it broke to top sixteen, and then it went onwards from there. Um, and if you don't already know, like the reason I'm making this video is largely due to the fact that I actually won the tournament and going to the world championship, which I'm super stoked about. It's you know a dream come true. Um, but enough of the celebrations and that kind of thing. Let's get into what this video is going to be about. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is going over the deck list briefly. Um, they will be in the description if you miss them as well, so don't worry about that. Um, talking about kind of lineup strategies, uh, just how the tournament went, give you an idea, idea of um, what actually happened in the tournament. Those of you who follow me and how I'm doing with Duelist. Um, yeah, basically that. Any other thoughts I have as we go along will also be included. So, the three generals I brought to the tournament were Songhai, uh, Reva, Argeon and Kara. Now, those of you who know me you know Songhai is is my baby. Like I love Songhai. I always want to play Songhai when I can. Um, and if I'm playing a tournament and I feel like Songhai is the best deck, or it's a good en if it's good enough to win, um, I'm going to go to Songhai 99% of the time because it's what I practice the most. It's what I love playing. It's what I enjoy playing. Um, and if it's you know 50 50 between the decks, I'm going to choose the one that I love playing. So pretty obvious there. Um, and I did in fact play. Pretty much 95% Songhai throughout the tournament. I played a couple of Argeon games and no Kara games, but we will go over those decks just very quickly, give you a, give you a bit of an idea of why I would bring a third deck anyway, because I mean, I don't really need a third deck, so I had to bring one, but why I, I at least had Kara and Argeon in mind. So before we get into it, um, just give you a quick overview of the tournament. So that was, I ended up playing 12 best of fives and I won um, 11 of them. So we'll go over some of the, the matches, just comment what happened, any interesting bits of strategy, and hopefully things you guys can pick up and learn from, um, especially those of you who want to be playing Songhai in tournaments. Uh, when are the times that you don't feel comfortable playing Songhai? And maybe the time, maybe that answer is never, but we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> okay, so the first deck is the Songhai deck. Um, now this is the deck I play a ton on stream. It's not the main one I started with, and not the deck I developed. This is actually no way it's Jay's deck, um, though we, we both came kind of came to very, very similar conclusions post Shimza, where I basically had the same deck with um, Kataras, um, in Mel's instead of Kataras, and then he played Kataras. Um, I didn't have a lot of prep time before this tournament, I hadn't really been playing the game that much, so Jay won a few tournaments with it, and I was like, okay, I'll give this deck a try, like, um, I, I respect Jay a lot as a player, you guys know how much I love No as Jay, uh, so I decided to take his deck to the tournament because I thought it would be very strong, uh, and it was pretty similar to my own deck, and Katara definitely had a lot of appeal to me. Uh, especially in an open tournament, when you're, you know, at least a strong player, an s rank player, going into these open tournaments, I think there's a lot of merit to cutting out auto losses from your deck. Now, people always talk about Songhai being inconsistent, and we can argue back and forth about that, uh, but one key inconsistency with a Songhai deck often tends to be a lack of turn one players going first, and my Mel deck, while I believe it's very strong, it probably equal in part to this, uh, it does only have six uh, turn one plays, and obviously that makes it stronger in other regards, but it can create some more auto loss situations where you basically have nothing to play in the first few turns. Um, so going into an open tournament where I'm going to be seeing a lot of newer players or you know, diamond players, gold players, I wanted to cut out a few more auto losses. So that was another reason I went towards the Katara. Um, whereas if you're only versing, uh, only versing the best players in the game, you just want to go with what are the strongest. Now I'm not saying the Mel deck is stronger, but I'm just saying that was the reasoning. Uh, if it's a 50-50, I'm going to go with the one that has less chance of losing to a bad player because you want to cut those out completely, especially in the Swiss rounds. Uh, so that was the Songhai deck, very strong. I do kind of switch out between a third Four Winds and second Heaven's Eclipse, and in the finals and the top eight, I kind of regretted it a little bit, but that's a little bit results oriented thinking. I'm continuing to test this on stream, uh, but I think I actually I'm starting to lean towards the Heaven's Eclipse. Uh, the double heavens eclipse version, but it's a play style thing, it's a matchup thing. Uh, you can't really go wrong with either option. So, on to the next deck. Uh, I'll talk about the Kara first. Now, I don't like Kara, I don't mind playing it, but I absolutely hate it as a general. I find it very boring. Um, I think the deck's just not fun, and I, I prefer it wasn't in the game. But 
it is very strong, and that's why I brought it to the tournament. Um, but I actually didn't end up playing it at all. I thought there was potential for situations where I might feel like playing Kara instead of Songhai, like where I felt um, not comfortable playing Songhai. And uh, obviously my Arjun, we'll get to that in a second, but that's a counter deck. So I wanted a strong deck uh, for when I can't play Songhai. But, you know, I'm a pretty confident Songhai player. I feel good playing Songhai nearly all the time. Um, and the situation never really came up where I felt like I was too heavily teched against. Um, or the matchup was too one-sided, and that my uh, Argeon tech deck basically couldn't get the job done, and I'd have to go to this. But I think this is a very strong deck. If I was a you know a neutral player, I didn't have any strong feelings um, or strong practice towards any one deck, this is probably uh, the deck that I would bring to the tournament, and I think Kara is still a very, very strong option for competitive players, uh, however boring it may be. So that's the deck. Nothing too crazy there. Yeah, the Inquisitor Cron is like a tech spot. Uh, you can only put in anything, and I think that's a tool that, uh, if you're bringing Kara to your lineups, is, is something you really, really want to uh, consider because say you're playing a Songhai um, a deck, you were worried about the Kara matchup, you may simply play a Kara um, and then put in Sunset Paragons or something and tech against Karas. Uh, so something like that is really, really important and I think Kara is quite good at that. You know, you just chuck in two cards at the five slot and suddenly you've improved uh, certain matchups. So one thing I just forgot to realize I touched on was the actual format of how you bring the deck. So you bring three decks um, and it's best of fives and you can only play two of the generals within that best of five. So you can't play Liner, Arjun, and then Kara in the third game. Uh, so once you've played two, you're locked into that. Um, doesn't affect strategy too much, but the flexibility of the decks, like hard counter decks aren't as potent, unless you expect to be versing one trick ponies, um, which actually leads on very nicely to my next deck, the Lion Eye deck. Uh, speaking of one trick ponies, there are a lot of Kara mains out there who play nothing but Kara, especially in tournaments. And this was basically what the deck was designed to do. Now, once again, this actually was Jay's deck. As I said, I hadn't really been playing before the tournament. Um, he sent me this idea a while ago. I don't know if he changed it. I don't know what he did. Um, but it said it's just like a really good anti car deck. And I believed him. And it worked out pretty well. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily that much better than playing Songkai against Kara. I played it a few times in the early rounds and won with it. And then my, actually, my only loss with the deck was... Uh, my only loss in the tournament was to Wagner's Act, where I tried to play this deck twice against this Kara and lost both times. So maybe it needs like a better result against the, the maybe something more is needed to beat the really top Kara players. Um, but against some other Kara players who are at the tournament who aren't as well known, the deck actually performed a lot. But I think all in all, I only played like four, maybe five games of this, and then the rest were just all awesome. high. So not going to go too much into uh, decisions of when to play Songhai or not. We'll talk about when I was actually thinking about not playing Songhai, uh, but in the end, I went with my comfort pick, and especially in the high pressure moments, you know, I put in a lot of Songhai games. Sure, it's a hard deck to play, but you've got to step up to the pressure, and you've got to trust in your deck, and you've got to trust in yourself, and that's why I played Songhai um, throughout the playoffs. Uh, all right, so let's go through, we'll quickly talk through the games. There's not a ton to talk about with the games, um, some of them, but I'll just quickly go through the results. So, oh, where did I put that battle file? There we go. Okay, so I guess. Um, so first round was against Maverick, and I three would I think I just played Songhai throughout that. Uh, the second game was against Ultra Jizz. I don't really know how to say his name, uh, but he seemed to be a Kara player, and he beat me game one with Kara. And when I get beaten by Kara, that was when I kind of thought, okay, now I'm going to the counter deck, because obviously, people tend to stick with the deck that they won with, even though it's not a last hero standing format, it still just tends to work because none of the generals, none of your opponent's options have changed. And you kind of thought it was the deck best deck beforehand, you won your match, you tend to think it was the best choice. So then I switched to the liner, I uh, got a few wins, and often with the liner, I was just hoping to get them off that Kara. And more than anything, it was just the fear of liner being able to counter Kara, which would get them off onto another deck. And honestly, with Songhai, I feel over 50% win rate against any other faction um, than Kara. And Kara, I think, is about a 50-50, though sometimes, though, like, sometimes they can really just destroy you, and there's not much you can do. Uh, and that's kind of just part of you know, Kara, and in the open tournament, I didn't want to be versing a bunch of Karas, because anybody on any day can probably beat you on Kara if you're playing Songhai, just because the matchup can be pretty 50-50 and often there's not a lot you can do to outplay them. 
So onto that. So then we came to round three. So there was 12 rounds of the tournament I played, and my loss actually came in round three, and it was 0-3 to Wagnerzak, which honestly felt kind of bad. Like that early in the tournament with so many players uh, versus such a high quality player such as Wagnerzak, it definitely feels a little bit bad. Um, and he played Kara all three times against me. I lost with the Song Hai, um, and then I switched to the lineup for the last two deck games. And honestly, in this early in the tournament, I really wanted just to see how good this Argeon deck was because it was something I hadn't actually played before. So I wanted to see. Uh, how good is Arjun as a counter to Kara? And Wagnerzak was the first wake-up call that uh, Kara can still has a lot of game in the matchup. Obviously, I think he probably like the draws are probably a little bit below average for me, a little bit above average for him. But Wagnerzak's a very good player, taking nothing away from him, of course. Um, I think he played that series very well. So, kind of was hesitant to go towards the Arjun deck, but I definitely would have brought it out later in the tournament if I came across any, you know. Kara only players, but I didn't really for the rest of the tournament. And when Kara was just like an option, I thought it was a 50-50 or a 1 in 3 choice, then I tend to go with Songhai. It was really just looking to punish the Kara only players, because those ones are pretty easy to take against, and the rest I actually felt very, very confident with Songhai. So, didn't really go much further than that. On to the next round, 3-0 um, versus Misery. I'm pretty sure all the 3 O's would have just literally just been Songhai. Uh, and then 3-0 versus Cheese Mangsel. Uh, in round five, so then we were at four and one, uh, and three over Stewie HS in round six, so another song hanging. Um, and then round seven was versus Cyborn. So I'll paint the picture of what was happening here. Um, so it looked like six and one was obviously guaranteed in, and five and two was um, not really that guaranteed. Like, I think only a couple five and twos make it, and I had a look at my tiebreakers, and I realized I'm actually not going to make it because uh, you know, there's people who dropped out after I beat them. Um, or they just didn't do very well, all that kind of thing. So I was 99% sure if I went 5-2 and two and lost to Subbon that I wasn't going to make it. Um, and it started out like pretty difficult series. He, well, I think he went Kara most of the time, and I think I switched back and forth between the Lina and the Songhai. And we traded 1-1, one -on -one. Um, he got to 2-1, I tied up a 2-2, but I wasn't really feeling very good against about the series um, if I kept on with the Songhai. So... I switched to Lina on the last one, and Cybon, being the very smart player, the very smart man that he is, he switched to Vath on the last game. He hadn't played it all series, but he predicted that after losing a game with my Songhai, I'd want to try and try something new, which possibly was a mistake. Because um, when I when I picked it up, I was even like, I know he's going to pick Vath here, and he picked Vath, even though he hadn't played it all series. He is a Magma player, but um, obviously he was winning with Kara, so he probably felt pretty decent about it. Uh, so very very smart move by him. It's definitely not a matchup that deck is designed to beat, but I was pretty fortunate. I went pretty aggressive um, and play like got an Arclight Regalia, did a lot of face damage early, um, and he used a lot of cards that like just flooding the ball with some man drag. So his hand was pretty empty. So basically, he made a play um, that wins a lot of the time if he doesn't have Earth Sphere. Uh, had quite a few outs and managed to replace into one of my outs and win the game. But it was a very very close series. I went to the fifth game, and then I was fortunate enough to get through. And then fortunately for Sabon, um, he actually. Had better, he had better tiebreakers than me at 5 2, so he would have got it through anyway. But I went through, um, finished the Swiss rounds with a 6 and 1 record. So there's only one person who went 7 and 0. Oh. Um, and then after that, so I was like 6 of a rank, but I don't think the, I don't believe the top 16 was actually seated. I think it was random. Um, so anyway, that was the first weekend. This was two, um, two days for the Swiss rounds, and they started at 12 a.m. for me, and both times finished at like 5 a.m. So it was pretty grueling a like, time series. Um, definitely didn't enjoy the 12 a.m. start, especially the first round of the tournament went from like 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. So that was pretty tough. Uh, but we managed to get through, and then the following weekend would be the top 16 playing it out uh, until we had a winner. So onto the top 16. I had my group, and I was not happy about my group. Uh, I looked at the other groups, and I thought they were honestly a, a lot easier. Like I thought I had, I called it the group of death. Um, but I just really didn't expect to win in that group. I didn't expect to do well. Um, and I thought some of the other groups were maybe a little bit easier or at least less known players. So my group consisted of Pixies, um, very strong Abyssian player. You guys probably see him on the Discord a lot. Uh, Braga, I've been putting up a ton of really good tournament results. And then Colos the Dragon, which everyone knows, um, also a really, really strong tournament player who's uh, done well against me in the past. Uh, I mean, it's pretty, probably pretty 50-50 before that, but I, I really respect him as a player. So um, was very, very scared of this group. And the way it worked is there'd be two people going through as a double elimination. So you win your first round, and then if you win that round, you have two more chances to get in. Um, and then if you 
lose the first round, you have to go through the loser's bracket. So two people will get through, uh, and it was seeded. So I played my first game against Colos. I um, was pretty happy. Okay, so we'll go from the start. Um, so he... I can't remember what his third general was, but it was Kara and Kasiba were his other two, and those are the two that I expected him to play. Obviously, he's a Kasiba main, he has been for a very long time, so that was the main thing I was worried about, and then also Kara just being the strong deck it is, I was also in the back of my mind. So those are the two decks I was thinking of, um, and because he wasn't just a Kara player, um, I was going to play... I was going to play this on that. Like, I thought about the Kara, but... Um, I, and I knew the matchups for old Kasiva with Kara, like Kara was possibly pretty good, depends how they tech and stuff, but I think Kara was possibly favoured in that matchup most of the time. Um, but against the new Kasiva, you really don't see it that often, and I don't really play a lot of Kara these days, so I wasn't comfortable in the matchups, whereas I knew that I was favoured against Kasiva with Songhai, and I was pretty confident against this Kara. Like, against people who aren't a Kara main, I still think I have a decent edge. Um, but against the ones who are, then I think it gets very 50-50 of a matchup, and that's not where I wanted to be. Um, so I ended up winning the first two games pretty easily with Songhai. Um, I think it's such a good matchup, like, looking super hard for Killing Edge in a focus. Heartseekers wins games, especially when you answer Kaleno. Um, you just play a little bit more grindy, because you... They still play, like, a lot of 1 and 2 drops, so you can actually kind of outvalue them a lot of the time. Um, Shadow Nova on 7 doesn't, like, threaten lethal, so that's, like, a massive part of the matchup. And if you have an answer to Kalena when it comes out, which is a big part of my early game decision making, especially looking for Killing Edge in a focus, when they play Kalena, it actually becomes a downside in the matchup. So that was kind of the general philosophy there. In the third game, I I went over aggressive. Um, I could have killed his Abyssal Juggernaut, but I didn't respect it. I put a fa ton of face damage, um, and the fact that he was able to remove I think, both of my Shakris kind of left me in a really, really tough situation, um, and I didn't join on the Jux to get me out of it. So. Kind of misplayed that game. I think he had a pretty good start, so it would have been hard anyway. Um, but, you know, kind of got punished a little bit for being over-aggressive. And then the fourth game, maybe maybe the second game, I think actually the second game he might have played Kara. Because I know he played a Kara game in there. Yeah, second game he played Kara and I still won with the Songhai. And then he went to the Kasiva again, uh, won with the Kasiva. And then the fourth game he played the Kasiva again, which I was happy about. And we managed to win, because I do think it's a good matchup. Um, but it can be a hard one, because it's... Bit different, you're not trying to just burst them down as much as you can because you don't want to get punched back a laner. So you play a little bit more board control, um, kind of abuse the lack of ability of you know, Bissian to really deal well with ranged threats. So that went like that. Um, and then versing Bry Guy was actually kind of a refreshing change because I was so used to versing like Kara and well, Kara, <laughs> and uh, he didn't play Kara against me at all, which felt really, really good. Um, he played Xerix, which I thought about going to the Kara because I know Kara is pretty decent against Xerix, but it still didn't feel like that good of a matchup, um, or like that big of an edge. And with Songhai, I actually do feel very favoured against um, Retrovian. I think it's a matchup you need to learn, because like stuff like Kron and Amaya can actually be really scary, but they often just play like really big slow threats. Um, and once you get through the Siphon energies, and normally there's only like two a lot of these days, and so they often just draw one. That's the real good card in the matchup. Um, if you can set up good juxtapositions, it actually wins you the game on the spot a lot of the time because of how powerful the tempo swing is. So that's the kind of game plan against Vitruvia that I went for. Um, I might as well get the Songhai deck up on screen. Um, so basically it worked pretty well against that. And then the Songhai, he actually played Songhai. It was the first Songhai I versed. And may have been the only time I versed Songhai or Tournament. I want to say, probably was one or something in there, but I don't think there was really any Songhai. Um, even in the top, like, 16, I didn't see any, uh, or hear of any being played. So, the Songhai Mirror is something I'm really, really comfortable in. I feel like I normally have an edge, I don't really lose it very much, but obviously Bright Guy is a very, very good player. Um, he got a really, really nice start, but I kind of recognised that the game was going grindy, and despite Songhai decks being really, really explosive, they actually tend to go very, very grindy. So I was able to recognise that, and really swing the board, um, he got ahead, and I let him take the board a little bit, um, and just wait. And then I was able to just drop like two land foxes, and it kind of just snowballed out of there. Um, and he kind of felt like he must have been losing the value game, so he ended up going really, really fast. But all it really took was like a four wins and like literally one spell fox to stabilize, as long as I blocked four damage, um, and then kind of won that one from there. Then he went back to Xerix in the last game, and then I beat him there. So we went three one three zero through the what I called the group of death. I really respected everyone in the group, um, and came out as the first seed. So, my um, first round opponent for the top eight was Boss, um, and he played Varth against me three times in a row, 
which I mean I was a little bit confused by it I can understand his reasoning like he was very teched out for Songhai I think everyone in my bracket was teched out for Songhai um, because no way SJ was literally right next to me and they had uh, I don't know if it was a whole week to prepare it may have actually been a whole week to prepare a deck list I mean I didn't prepare any de I didn't change my deck list from the start of the tournament um, but I know a lot of other people did and so basically everything I versed in so you could tell I had been tech for Songhai because both, both me and Jay main Songhai um, and I mean I'm even more Songhai based than Jay is because he plays the Kara as well but um, so he played like Zen Ruiz and a bunch of Earth Spheres but that's really not the trick to beating Songhai like sometimes Zen Rui can be good but the rest of the deck still has to be good and Magmar's problem in the matchup is it doesn't deal well with ranged threats um, it doesn't have like good infection to spell like Egg Morph is yeah, it, it kind of works sometimes but it's pretty easy to play around so even though he had this healing I was still able to grind him out look for heart seekers early on um, and even games where he got like behind I was actually able to outvalue him pretty hard like he got ahead I mean so when I got behind he got ahead um, he done a bunch of damage to me I was in the corner I was like low on health I was scared and I was actually just able to outvalue him pretty hard so ended up grinding that one out and went 3-0 in the series um, obviously his deck was teched but I'd still expect to win that series a large percentage of the time because I think Songhai vs Fath is a really really good matchup for the Songhai player if played correctly um, I think that's kind of like a lot of people like these decks with healing it's recognizing that healing doesn't count as Songhai by itself and a lot of the matchups where they're really good at healing they're not good at being Songhai and uh, as long as you can recognize that your win condition changes a little bit, you should be pretty fine in those matchups. Um, and so that was the top eight. Then I versed in, uh, the semi finals, was versus Abercrombie. And he basically played Argeon against me the whole time, which Argeon was something I hadn't really prepared for. Um, and the reason for that is, well, I think naturally Songhai is pretty good against Argeon. Um, Argeon's pretty good against, against the Kara and. I wasn't really confident enough with my line to verse anything but Kara with it. So basically it was kind of pigeonhole into playing Songhai. I felt I didn't want to take that line matchup. Um, but it turns out that it was pretty hard teched against Songhai. It seemed like a Lion Eye deck uh, that was just purposely built to deal with Songhai with like Circle of Life for four wins and range threats, uh, Zen Rui, a bunch of provokes, and you know, it can really get pushed on to the limits, but it kind of goes back to that magma thing where you still have like a lot of really good things where you can go late game and that happened quite a few times I actually went down to one in the series um, like sometimes Lion Eye can just really get you just like curving out perfectly and then just like a circle of life when you try and burst them down it's actually really really good but I think Songhai is still at least like 50-50 in the match or at least it's got to be close to it so I stuck with the Songhai managed to come back and win in a uh, win 3-2 so best of 5 and then the finals actually ended up being very very similar uh, neither of us switched from a Songhai or Lion Eye, and he basically was playing a very, very similar deck. Both had you know, Circle of Lives, I believe Zenui, I can't quite remember. Um, I think it did. But the thing is, when these people are playing these decks with like Zenui and Circle of Life, it'll catch you off like once, and then you can play around it. Like you realize you go for the long game, um, you can only really go for Burst when you have like if you set up Lethal, you can beat Circle of Life, or um, they're low on cards. And you sometimes play around Zenry, like a lot of games you just don't play Fox. And that's perfectly fine, because if you're not playing Fox, they're probably not playing Zen Rui a lot of the time. And that's completely fine. Uh, the rest of York does still line up pretty well against their deck. So, both series, I went down, both the semis and the finals, I went down 2-1. Um, and then came back and won at 3-2, and won the whole tournament, qualified for the World Championship. Um, I really, really couldn't believe it. Like, in all honesty, I... In all honesty, I wasn't really prepared for the tournament. I hadn't been playing a lot. I basically just submitted the Songhai deck that I always play um, and kind of went from there. And it actually worked out, which feels really good. Um, and, you know, Songhai, I was kind of waiting for a time when Songhai would be good enough to win tournament. And it turned out really, really well. The first qualifier I could play in, um, Songhai was definitely good enough. And I was on holiday, so I was able to stand four nights of uh, 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. tournament play which worked out really well. Uh, so all you know, kind of stars came together, and obviously you get a bit lucky to win any you know big tournament like that. Uh, so obviously a bit of luck there, but I, I like to think that I played well um, and was able to file out Songhai effectively. Now, how long is this? 25 minutes. I just want to talk a little bit about Songhai's power level because I see a lot of complaints, a lot of call to action to nerf Songhai. There's so many Songhais all these kind of things and it really does confuse me 
Uh, obviously, I think Songhai is strong. Like, I've just won a massive tournament with it, um, won 11 out of 12 best of fives with it, but I really don't think it's overpowered. And I think the main evidence I have for that is that none of the tournament players are playing it. Uh, like, Jay is probably the only one. Wicked Flux are probably the, you know, the two other Songhai players who are playing it in tournaments, and the rest, I really don't ever see Songhai. I... You know, occasionally see it in someone's lineup, but even then, they never really played it. I mean, obviously, I could have been dodging all these Songhai players, but I really don't think so, especially not in the top eight and top sixteen. No known so Songhai players apart from me and Jay. Um, even in the, the Jewels Pro League, which happened about the time this tournament started, uh, I was making a lineup. I was building it. This was Conquest, so you can actually counter one deck, and I built a counter Reaver lineup because I was like, okay, it's Mizilji. Um, I think Kara and Reaver are the best two decks in the game. So, you know, Mizzou plays whatever, he has, played, he has main song high before. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'll just counter Reaver. And then he didn't play Reaver in his whole lineup. So, you have to start to ask, like, why are people not playing song high in tournaments? And I think that to me that is a big reason why I don't think song high should be nerfed. I don't know, like, if everyone really thinks that, but I definitely see it a, a decent amount on stream. Um, and I think people just tend to not really like losing to burst damage. And saying like it's a perfect hand, you can have nothing to do about it. But guys, like just because like every deck can have a perfect hand, there's nothing you can do about it. But just because they're curving out perfectly instead of killing you in one turn, uh, when they have to do a lot of build up, doesn't mean it's that much worse. Obviously, you're very free to disagree on that. Um, but I would personally like to see, at least understand why there's not so many Songhai players on tournaments and like why the good players uh, tend to shy away from Songhai. Obviously, I think it is actually a really high skill cap deck. I'm obviously pretty biased, but. Uh, think if it's as good as people who say it should be nerfed, uh, probably, I, I want to see some, you know, people putting up more results with it, other than just me and Jay, so, that's just, I don't want to start a whole argument over Songhai, this was mainly meant to be about tournament strategies, and uh, that kind of thing, I actually think the meta is pretty diverse right now, I don't necessarily like the meta, uh, but I think it's actually decently diverse, I think Kaseev is completely fine, I think Varth is, like, decent, um, and can work as, like, counter decks, and against certain lineups, I think Kara is like very strong, unfortunately. I think Songhai is very strong. I think Arjun works pretty well as well. So I think all of those work pretty well. Um, kind of every faction is viable to an extent. This is some of the generals aren't. And I don't really like the curving out of like stuff like Xerix, but that's always going to happen in card games. So that's basically it. A lot of rambling in this video. Uh, we'll remember to put the deck list in the description, hopefully. Um, but yeah, guys, if you love Songhai, this is proof you can win tournaments, and uh, hopefully you guys can you know, follow me on my YouTube channel, subscribe if you want to, uh, as I kind of go through this journey of preparing for the World Championship, improving as a player. It's a long way away, I'm the second person to qualify, so I have months of just not having to worry about winning tournaments and just, just simply being good at the game. Um, and then hopefully Songhai will be good when World comes around, so that's all I really have to say. So counter play if you're watching, just buff Songhai right before ner uh, Worlds and we'll be happy. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.